Hey, Nikki. Hey, Selena. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Sweet Tea and TV. Hey, y'all. I didn't do that last time. Oh. Oops. Sorry. Dang it. Welcome to the last episode and this episode. You're always welcome here. That's the bottom line. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, I like to ease into the episode. Ease in. Smooth. Mm-hmm. Very smooth. I was going to ask you just... Like, so before we do that, is there just like one thing you're enjoying right now? Something I should check out maybe? Oh, hmm. Oh, it doesn't have to be something. Like, I don't have, I don't have to check it out. <laughs> maybe I won't you, enjoy it. You <laughs> <laughs> you're like gardening. I'm like, I'm out. Oh my God. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> that's what I was going to say. I'm like, nope. You can check it out. Come to my yard and see it. We're, I like, would love to see your yard. We're experiencing like that um, false spring where mm-hmm. you really mm-hmm. feel like it's wonderful. Um, and like next week, it's gonna we're going to have a snowstorm. Blizzard. Absolutely. Yeah. But we've been having really nice weather and my flowers are starting to come up. I plant a lot of perennial bulbs so that they'll come back year after year and I don't have to keep planting new ones. Yeah, that's what someone did here. It yeah. wasn't me. Yeah, I noticed yeah. that when I pulled up today. Tulips are coming up. They're beautiful. Jonquils. Mine... I have not had lots of success with, um, like, uh, they're not tulips. Anyway, I have some, like, perennials I planted. They just nothing came of them. But I planted some others that are starting to come up. And my blueberry bush, I lost a blueberry bush last year. And the with birds. Blueberries? The birds ate all my blueberries. So I never had they any, like, the little. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I or netted it, but it didn't work. So I planted a new blueberry bush last weekend to because you have to have two of them two. so they'll cross-pollinate. Yep. My trees, I have two apple trees that I planted a couple years ago. I lost one, so I had to replace that one last year. They are growing really nicely. So it's just been really fun to see what's coming up and yeah. reminding myself that it's not going to be winter forever. Yeah, that's nice. That's nice. I actually am very excited because um, – I, I want to go back to Gibbs Garden for mm, the spring because yeah. it's just, all those tulips. So pretty. Colors, like, it doesn't look real. So And it has, like, the smell. Like, it just smells like spring. Yeah. And it feels nice. Yeah, because I'm not, like, I don't, it would feel weird if I'm just, like, the gardens. No, right. it's the ing. Right. The ing. I just, I can't get into it. I, it's, it's hard. Too, too much forced gardening when I was little. It's it's hard work and it can be a little frustrating. Yeah, I don't. I'm frustrated all the time, so I don't really need to add to that. So this year for Valentine's Day, instead of flowers, Kyle got each one of us a plant, which I thought was such a great idea. So he got Landon an azalea, and I put that out in the garden. Um, and he got me a rose bush that didn't have any buds on it yet. I planted it in the garden, and the next day I walked out and I was like, it looks so much more anemic than it did even just yesterday when I put it out here and I pulled it up on our our doorbell you know we have the camera on our doorbell and something at 6 a.m I couldn't see what it was either a bunny or a squirrel just like went up and ate the leaves off of it and so now it's just these like sticks sticking out of the ground so I, I had to net that too to try to keep them away till it can bud um and then he bought Carolina some tulips, and but they're in like a hydroponic vase. So okay. when they die off, you can plant the bulbs in your garden. I've gotten those from my mom before. They're super cool. Yeah. yeah. And then I told you when I got to your house today that I had my white whale moment at Costco and they had fiddle leaf fig real plants uh, for sale. So I, mine has never had those before. So I grabbed it real quick this week. So I have a new fiddle leaf fig inside my house. So you're living the dream. I've just had so much going on flowers wise. Yeah. <laughs> Um, well, so one thing that I'm enjoying right now is, I don't, or I did actually, because I finished it, but I did really enjoy it was selling sunset on Netflix. Have you watched it? I think I watched an episode of it. It felt like quicksand to me. I don't know, Nikki. It's like the Kardashians. I went went all the way. I went all the way in. I don't know. I found it. um, So, okay. Let me back up. Let me back up. If you don't know what Selling Sunset is, like, because I saw little clips on it. You know, this stuff will come up when Mm -hmm. you just turn Netflix on. And, like, um, I think it really started populating a lot for mine after I watched Bling Empire. Oh. I was like, Ew. You're that kind of viewer. Right. And I was, so I was hesitant because when it had come up before, I was like, ugh, what is this? You know, and now I'm like, ugh. <laughs> what is this? 
<laughs> Ever since like Below Deck and Bling Empire, like, you should just take their recommendations and not judge it. Just take it and see how you like it. It's fine. Um, you know what? Because I've just sort of been in the state and I thought maybe this is might be what you identify with. I just can't right now. Yeah. I just can't really handle anything serious. Um, although I am simultaneously watching something serious. I won't talk about that now, but I'll just say like it's been a little tough mm-hmm. because I just need to kind of be in the surface level. Mm-hmm. Um, and what I will say is that, oh, oh, this is about the real estate agency in L.A. So, mm-hmm. and these real estate agents that I'm like, sure. Mm-hmm. Um, because they're, uh, oh, I mean, I mean, it's not that you can't do this. It's just like, you know, it's, they don't look like Georgia real estate agents. Let's just put it that way, you know, just uh, very perfectly quaffed. And um, there's a lot of cleavage. So you sound like up. LBT railing on the cleavage. Beverly Hills couple in it's the last episode. Funny to me because when I saw that episode or went back and was reviewing my notes because I also had something about Mary Jo's oh, uh-huh. take and knowing that's obviously LBT's take on the Beverly Hills crowd, I immediately thought of selling something. <laughs> It all came like, full circle. Those are real people. I'm not like whatever. Like I, I think I'm just saying. It's just I a don't different see lifestyle. That many breasts in real estate in Georgia. That's all I'm saying. You know what I think is you're probably just not looking at the right price range. Oh, maybe. I mean, I think. Like, let me be very clear. If you want your, I'm. If you want your whole boob out, <laughs> that's your business. I'm not like it's whatever. I'm just saying. I'm like it doesn't look like. My real estate agent, which <laughs> happened to also be last time my sister-in-law, so I'm glad. Because that would have been very awkward for I was me. Just thinking about our middle-aged male real estate agent is <laughs> breasted. There's still time. You know what? He can free that nipple if he <laughs> wants to. If he wants. Um, but I just wanted to say that, like, the thing that's actually, uh, I, I, I do get tied up in the drama, but it's these houses. Woo. Um, and this is actually... Not selling Sunset, it's selling OC because, like, I really threw, I flew through, flew through them, Nikki. Oh my! But look, so one house's primary bedroom had a round bed that turned under a retractable roof, so that no matter what, you could get the perfect view that you wanted of the um, the beach around you and out into the night sky, and then. To exit the bedroom, it was a circular staircase. Do you love a circular staircase? <sighs> With a glass floor underneath it. So you can like also that. see like, I drop the waves my phone a lot. Crashing on the beach. Yeah, I know. I would have that situation there. I, have I come have... downstairs with like 17 things in my hands and I, I always drop my phone. Yeah, well, I think they're coming with the price point on this house. I'm assuming they're coming down with a butler behind them. That's true. Um, but yeah, just, I mean, absolutely mind-blowing but also like the prices are mind-blowing too because someone bought a flip like pre-flip to flip it for 2.7 million lord like it's just a whole different universe out there that's what i'm saying from the way people look to the way they dress to like i'm just a like i don't know if i'm saying a uh a a slur oh no (laughs) no like a uh not a slur like a um uh just something in Yiddish that I don't actually know what it means. Oh. And I'm, I'm saying something like, what some word for penis accidentally. Oh. <laughs> what I'm trying to I'm say is... I'm just a is, schlong. <laughs> I'm just a real dong. <laughs> um, no, but like, I just feel like I'm always, I'm just like, look at me. <laughs> You know? It just makes you wonder, like, between this show that you're talking about and then you mentioned the celebrity couples, um, not celebrity couples, very wealthy couples and their divorces, like, why do we have so much poverty in the world? Yeah. Yeah, I know. It's so weird. Um, so <laughs> I can't right <laughs> now, so, so I'm going to continue watching the show. <laughs> I can't. not think I'm about done. it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. But speaking of fancy houses, Ooh, should we get into this week's episode? That's a nice transition. Uh, So this week's episode is Designing Women Season 4, Episode 8, Julia Gets Her Head Stuck in a Fence. Sugar Bakers is hired to decorate the governor's mansion for the annual ball, but Julia's head getting stuck in an antique banister is one objet de art they didn't plan on. Air date, November 20th, 1989. I wasn't prepared for that. I'm I'm like, what did you just say? I thought that was object to art. She was a knickknack they weren't expecting. Um, We're calling this one The Bannister Buffs of Atlanta. It was written by Pam Norris and directed by David Trainer. We've got two pieces of show trivia this go-round. 
The staircase in the rotunda of the governor's mansion um, in the show is the set that's normally used for Suzanne's mansion. And in reality, unlike what's stated in the episode, there's no such thing as the Abbott Bannister in Georgia's governor's mansion. And you can tuck that one in the back of your brain because we're going to cover the Georgia governor's mansion this Thursday in Extra Sugar. (sighs) What are we thinking generally about this episode, Selena and Straley? Well, my first general reaction to your show trivia, even though I put that there, is that my Uh whole life I thought it was Rotundra. Oh! So, that's thing one. (laughs) And I probably could have just kept that to myself. But you know what? You know, my favorite thing... My favorite thing is hearing words that people have struggled with. So, Kyle used to think... That's my husband. Kyle. Kyle Mace. (laughs) He used to think the word um, chaos was chachos. Oh. Chachos. He, like, added letters. (laughs) And the first time I read Harry Potter, I thought Hermione's name was Hermione. And I played, one. I played this game, this computer game growing up um, when I was really young. It was like a really early computer game. And there was a character in there named Penelope. I thought her name was Penelope. Wouldn't that be an unfortunate yeah. name? Penelope? Penelope. Yeah. It sounds like something stuck on mm-hmm. your lip or something. Oh, nope. It's thinking stuck further down your body, but yes. Well. <laughs> Not my Penelope. Um, yeah. Yeah. I love hearing those stories. So thank you for owning up to that. We all have them. No one's perfect. And words are hard. That's right. Words are hard. The English language is really hard. It is. Even for English speakers. My kids, as they're learning to read and pronounce words, they, you know, they have questions. It doesn't make a lot of sense. I don't know, man. I just, all I can tell you is that's how it's pronounced. It's just how we, that's just where we landed. Someone landed, not us. Someone. Yeah. Sometimes it's just a real rotunda to wrap your head around. (laughs) So my first reaction was actually excitement because I actually, I really had a very firm memory of watching this one. Oh, really? And um, I, like, and I, like, from a young age, not just on a rewatch, you know, 10 or so years ago, uh, I remember loving it. And I think maybe why in retrospect, it's probably for a little kid, maybe the most relatable plot line, Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And it's a, a lot, lot of physical, physical humor. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that'll really get you when you're young. And uh, 37. Today. Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe today. But definitely would get me when I was a little kid. For sure. So that was my first one. And then I'll just also say that I, that feels related, is I, I like this one because I think with a few technological and fashion exceptions, you could pick up this plot line and drop it into a new show too. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there was nothing dated about this. Mm-hmm. I, a lot of my reactions for this one are stray. Uh, I do have one general reaction, and it's kind of relevant to something I brought up in the last episode. I am genuinely confused about Suzanne's social status at this point. So she wasn't invited to the governor's ball, but she took that really major and majorly expensive trip with what seemed to be maybe some VIP type people. So I really can't tell if she's in the in crowd or in exile. And that was my general reaction. And then I was like, there's something I'm missing in the script. Like they have to explain why she wasn't invited. Mm -hmm. I went back to the script and I watched the episode again. I couldn't find anything. So you correct me if I'm wrong. But I did go to designingwomenonline.net, I think. Um, And in their post about this episode, they say Julia implied or said at some point that it's something Suzanne did the year before that got her uninvited. But again, I watched the episode, I read the script, and I don't see anything about that. Um, So the same post says much of the conversation between Suzanne and Anthony regarding the ball is cut out of this episode as it airs in syndication. So is it possible, my dear friend, Selena, we are watching an edited, edited version of this episode? Oh, weird. So like Hulu's cutting crap, syndication's cutting crap. Yeah. I don't know. What is this show? So I have no idea what Suzanne did, but if I could find that information, it might fill that plot hole for me that is just going to drive me crazy. I just need to know, is Suzanne in or out? I wonder if it was just something that's so dusty at this point that they just, they rifted from the universe. Oh. Was it, could it have been something so bad? Oh. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. A lot of blackface a couple episodes ago. <laughs> Moving on. Um, <laughs> the rest of mine are all stray, so okay. I'll tune back in when you're ready to go there. Well, I only have one more, which is really just uh, a question for you, because I know Julia's character 
doesn't always really resonate with you. Mm-hmm. Although I'm like not entirely sure why Suzanne's does, but um, because I don't. She's ridiculous, right? Because y'all are. It's not like you're like similar, you know. Um, but did it a little bit more in this episode. And let me. I'm gonna go on for a second mm-hmm. before you answer. Tell me more. For once in your life, you do something spontaneous, <laughs> and then. Gosh darn it. Bam! Disaster. <laughs> All I was going to do was the slide on the cruise ship that goes off the side of the ship, and, and I fall off. off. <laughs> <laughs> that is so funny. I did not think about that, but you are probably 100% right. Probably because you 100%. probably are more, like, I don't think that you're like Julia, but Julia is like a really responsible gal. Yep, She's straight always. Straight and narrow. Yeah, and mm-hmm. I think, I just thought that maybe that might resonate with you. That's a really good time. point. I, I said recently, there's there are someone in my life that um, every time I talk to them, like I think of myself. You asked me at the top of the episode, anything you're enjoying, and I'm like gardening. Gardening is lovely, and I have this person in my life that when I talk to them, they make me feel like the most zany, wacky Bernice type character in the world. And oh, how I do want to. Pretend. <laughs> I know. No, we're not going to go there. Mm-hmm. But it is really funny. Like I am, I'm really straight and narrow. So it, you're right. It would be my luck that the second I decide to stray from the path, your head just gets stuck in a fence. And it, it's going to be something stupid too. Like I've told you before, my way of rebelling is like taking a slightly different road home because I just want to see what it looks like. I would take that slightly different road home and end up with a flat tire. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah, well, that's hard. It's hard. So you got some strays. Boy, do I. Uh, the first one I wanted to mention is they tease Suzanne about laying across grand pianos at six. Haven't we talked before about that being a Dixie Carter thing in real life? Yes. Laying across pianos? Yes. Do you think they put that in there because of that? I don't know. I'm not sure. I thought you would have an answer. I would love to have one. <laughs> I, I wouldn't be surprised for them to sneak something like that in. I would love to lay across a piano. Sounds great. Um, in that same bit where they were talking about all that, there was some script cut about Julia not being spontaneous. Um, they do sort of still in the, in the episode allude to that, but there was something a little more on the nose that I think would have connected the script a little bit better. It would have made it a little more clear why it was so crazy that she put her head through the thing. Uh, I also wanted to mention that I do think they used a real stock photo of the Georgia governor's mansion in the still before they transitioned into the women decorating the banister. Mm -hmm. That sounds really stupid that I would bring that up. But in the, it's season one. Okay. The, uh, Pageant? Beauty pageant. They did like the outside of that hotel right. and we're like, no hotel in Atlanta has ever looked like that. Right. Um, and Until so, someone calls me and says, Idiot. That's the uh, Marriott yeah. and whatever. Whatever. Um, but I always pay attention to those details because I just think they're fun. And I really do think it was the governor's mansion. I looked up pictures. I've been to the governor's mansion. I do not remember that level of detail, but I looked up pictures and I think it is. Then the last stray thing that I wanted to share is that the actor that played Miss Betts, mm-hmm. did you look her up too? Mm-hmm. Uh, her name is Anne Hearn. She was born in Griffin, Georgia. Most importantly to me, she's married to Ned Ryerson from Groundhog Day. Oh, really? You don't know his Ned. Ned the Head. Oh, that's funny. Uh, his, his real name is Stephen Tobolowski. Uh-huh. He's Who been in a lot of things. Done an extra sugar about. Yep, I knew that. <laughs> she's I, married to him. <laughs> I knew you would. So that's why I jumped in real quickly to say that's it. That's why I brought it up. <laughs> yep. Um, so, okay, it's so funny because that is my first strain <laughs> observation. No, I remember that. <laughs> my gosh, I got to start listening to our old episodes. Two years ago. Um, so, in a pandemic. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I also have her as a stray because I... I was wondering if the very last thing you were going to say was my stray stray, which is I wanted to see if she was actually Southern or not, which led me to the Griffin part. But to me, if I close my eyes and just listen to her talk, her Southern accent to me sounds like a Nell in Still Magnolia. Oh, that's so funny. So I don't know if you can picture her talk. Mm-hmm. Okay, if you can hear her talking now mm-hmm. or hear this I think that's talking. a really good point. Yeah, there's just something about the almost like the the diction, mm-hmm. the rhythm of it, just the whole thing. I was like, I ended up looking her up for the same reason to see if she was Southern because her accent felt really real to me. She almost felt like somebody they just went and picked up off the street, <laughs> played up. But yes, so um, I thought I thought that was really good. I also was um, part. I I called her the. And I do mean this with all the affection and self-awareness possible, the neurotic woman who manages mm. the governor's mansion. Yeah. I, I know. And I, <laughs> I do. Pot, kettle. Here. Yes. 
So it's a, it's okay. So we got to have them. Got to have somebody to keep those banisters and in order. They're the ones that keep things moving. It's true. But also related to Amy. Like, she gets all bent out of shape when they're using pens to decorate the banister. Like, why not tell them that in the first place? Like, like hey, this banister is really mm-hmm. important. Here's some rules. Because it wouldn't yeah. have been as funny. Don't tinker with it. Uh, right. And Mary Jo is, couldn't have said. This is what Casey no always pins. says to me. Selena, if this was happen there would not be a show a movie blah 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 but we have to talk about it got to talk about the realism uh did you have other strays Mm -hmm. the name of the episode why is it fence and not banister glad you asked that question i felt like maybe that would be a little too but i don't know here i I am well you know and i don't have a very good gauge for what's to look into it and you couldn't figure it out Mm -mm. i didn't know she says like a southern thing well you know you know she says like and your um, Amy says something about you have your head stuck in a fence. Uh huh. Okay, I don't know why she says that. Really, yeah. so it's weird, right? Okay, well, we didn't solve it. If anybody knows why, and she never fence. said that the banister. She said it was the surviving carpentry or whatever. She never says like it was originally a fence or anything, which would be super weird. That'd be way. super weird. Yeah, whatever. Really weird. I don't know. I mean, I, th- I I'm gonna say it is. Until someone tells me differently. <laughs> um, and everybody's going to be, a fence has always been a ba- I don't know. So I don't, I've never heard anything of the such, of the like. Speaking of like, what did you like this episode, Nikki? Oh, man. Some of the script writing in this one was just really, really sharp. Um, so like when Suzanne tells Charlene to find out who the mailman is, and Charlene says, I know who our mailman is. His name is Charles Ferguson. He's 60 years old. He has arthritis real bad, has about 12 grandchildren, and is very sweet. I think that's so great because I would never assume Charlene doesn't know the mailman. Yeah. And I'm really glad they didn't assume she didn't know the mailman. Of course she does. It also sounds like you. Oh. <laughs> I was small talking with someone recently, and uh-huh. I had that thought. I had that thought. I learned, like, an alarming amount of information about them. Oh, Costco, man. I was just trying to look at some plants, and this woman ended up giving me gardening tips for, like, 20 minutes. Kyle was like, were you? It was you? only to do with her, I'm sure. <laughs> Kyle was like, were you really done with plants, or were you just done with that situation? And I was like, I just felt like I didn't have the working knowledge of planting to have that conversation any further. You can only play ignorant for so long. Do you know? Oh, uh-huh. like some of the things she was saying, I kind of knew, but also it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. So I like that. What you're saying is that's Edna. She's 68. <laughs> she has three grandchildren. She's been gardening 35 years. Absolutely. She's a master gardener. Um, she's taking classes down at the local something. She's in the gardening club. Her favorite hat is delight. striped. And yeah. And Edna, if you're listening, you were a darn delight. It's not you. It's me. Um, and to that to Charlene's comment, Suzanne answered, if he stole my invitation to the governor's mansion, he's going to think arthritis. I'm going to crush his little knuckles so he'll never deliver another letter. I just loved that. That is very darling. <laughs> thought it was very funny. <laughs> um, I also really loved Anthony's soliloquy on the stairs. Mm-hmm. And this evening in the governor's mansion of the great state of Georgia, I'm finally going to be recognized for my struggle. And who would have thought after that long, hard uphill climb when I finally reached the top of the staircase... Julia would be here with her head stuck in it. <laughs> I just thought all of that was brilliant. It just every line, it felt like kept me laughing. Yeah, I had two that really stood out for me. I think everything once her head is stuck is pretty good. Yeah. Um, so at one point, everyone is there, including Anthony, and he they're like trying to get her out. Mm-hmm. And he's pulling on her legs. Suzanne is trying to push her face back through. And it's just all, like, I think that would be really hard to do, to act it out. Yeah. And it all and not hurt across, somebody. Right. And it all came across pretty natural. So I just thought it was a really good job all around there. But the best part was them dressing Julia behind a sheet. And then Julia finally losing it when Suzanne said she's worried her pantyhose are too dark for her dress whilst laid out on the staircase. It's just all too much. And then Julia just flipping out. I laughed out loud so hard when they dropped the sheet and she's laid on her back. With just her like, hair hanging. oh my yeah. God, I laughed so hard. I don't remember, although I've forgotten many things, I don't remember laughing that hard at this show in a long time. Yeah. I laughed very hard at that. It was really good. And then I like when Suzanne stands up for Julia. I always like the sisterly stuff. Um, and the I only child in you. It must be. It must be. But also I think it's like, it's just nice because like at the end of the day, this idea that like they pick at each other, but they're, oh, 
the family, picking on my sister. And yeah. I like that. I like it. It's um, also worth saying that yeah. Mary Jo looked amazing in her ball gown, in uh, my opinion. Oh, I wish I remembered. She I looked really remember. beautiful. Again, I may have a picture, but you've got my phone held hostage on the stand over here. <laughs> mine, so. too. I keep looking for mine, I and know. I'm like, well, it's in a stand. Trust so. me. She looked gorge. Yeah. She, I, hey, Annie Potts, beautiful lady. That was my last like. Um, so let's talk about what we didn't like. I got nothing. I So I think the biggest flaw is that it came right after Bernice's sanity hearing, and that's just a hard act to follow. Oh. Um, mm-hmm. But two hilarious episodes in a row. This one would have been a good one to sprinkle in later in the season for a little that's right. perk. Yeah. A little perky, if you will. Yeah, but I think that happened last season, too, where I was like, we got to episode five, and I was like, are we in a flawless season? Episode mm. six, nope. We're not all down the season. Yeah. Well, I don't know about all Sorry. downhill. Sorry. Yeah, no. uh, but it definitely, like, it w- like you just had these really strong contenders. And then definitely we had some filler episodes. Womp womp. Uh, how, you know, 22. It's just too many. And then whatever this, how many episodes is this season? A hundred like 28, I think. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot. What's happening? You want to rate this sucker? I do. I'm ready. My rating scale is decorators, dummies. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's what Mary Jo says uh, Julia is under the sheet. Uh, I gave it, I gave it a five out of a five. Two in a row, two in a row, two in a row. There you go. What Anything about you? you want to say? Okay, I didn't want to cut you off. I mean, it's good. Um, it's funny. I gave it four out of five. Perfectly matched pantyhose. <laughs> It was just perfect sitcom hijinks. Not only someone getting their head stuck in a banister, but it being Julia of all people, who not only, as we've already discussed, is like someone who just these things don't happen to, mm-hmm. but she's also a very proud person. Uh, then the governor falling through the imperfectly patched <laughs> piece at the end is pretty, like that really is just funny. so 80s to me. Yeah. 80s and 90s, really. Um, I should have mentioned in my strays. I'm sorry, not to interrupt you. I think I meant to mention this. Um, The way they cut the banister was so like random and unnecessary. They like cut like a whole segment out of it when really all they would have needed to do is cut like one spindle. Right. Again, to Casey's point, I know they did it for like the physicality of it and the humor of it, but that's uh, that's a hard plot hole to look past. Yeah. Like, that's, why did you cut half of it off? It was just, like, one spindle that was in the way. Yeah. Tough. Um, I So, I for, but it, that actually happening, I think, is it's what I want from that era of sitcom. Yeah. And I also think it did a nice job making a meal out of something really small. <laughs> that's you know? true. Um, and, and not in a way where I felt, like, um, claustrophobic. That's a really good point. Thanks. You're welcome. Um, 80s or other dated references? I have two 80s things. That disposable looking camera they were using to take pictures. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Classic. Charlene offered Julia a Sony Walkman on the steps <laughs> to keep her company. We just, that whole thing was funny too. <laughs> just all of it. <laughs> She's just trying so hard to be nice. Like trying to help. Here. Um, and she offered her a Coke at the same time, but that was in my Southern references. Gotcha. So I think blaming a postal worker for not getting an invitation. Mm -hmm. That's I'm not saying that it's just less likely to get invitations through the mail now. Um, I know that you feel very strongly about, um, and I don't. I don't blame you. I I I get it. That's something that's very nice. Um, The dusty rose carpet on the sugar baker stairs. I had not spotted that before, or I've spotted it, said it here, forgot, but it was really standout for me on the stairs at sugar bakers. Oh, Um, and it's a dusty rose color that is very of the era, and was at my grandparents' house. I think it's actually that dusty rose color is coming back. It's very big in style right now. I don't know about in carpet. Okay. Okay. But in decor. Okay. But it is a beautiful color. It's a beautiful color. It's just a weird carpet. Yeah. I I think, but I also think like colored carpet is weird to me. And it's that dusty rose with like that really pretty green, almost minty looking color. So that's what I, my grandmother had the mint green in carpet. She remodeled a bedroom at her house and put mint green carpet in there. Twas the time. Um, so, uh, just a lot of landline calls, I think we're going on mm-hmm. in this one. Mm-hmm. Um, lots of focus on pantyhose, mm. more focus than we usually get today. 
And then Mary Jo tells Miss Betts, um, don't worry, be happy. And, okay, this is like a little bit of a deep cut, but she's referencing the Bobby McFerrin song that came out the year before in 88, and it won the Grammy for Song of the Year. And the reason I thought about that is because it was like the way she said it. I knew she had to be referring to that song. And that song is such an earworm Mm -hmm. that I just figured it had somehow, it had to have been like timed with the actual release of that song. Mm. Um, you already covered Coca-Cola with Southern Things. What else you got? Uh, Suzanne and Julia had a picture of themselves on vacation in the Smoky Mountains as little girls. Mm-hmm. I feel like we all have one of those. Mm-hmm. We grew up in the South. <laughs> uh, we got another Ma Kettle reference, which we've talked about before. Uh, Rogers Theater in Poplar Bluff. That's where Charlene was an usherette. It's a real place. Mm-hmm. It was built in 1949. Sherman Birding down Atlanta. And Robert E. Lee, who Suzanne says was uh, their grandpa's roommate in college. Great-grandpa? It must have been their great-grandpa, no? I, th- I, th- I hope so. Oh, Lord. Well, we always say, or I'm always saying, how old is Julie? <laughs> <laughs> no, like, how old was Robert E. Lee? Hold on a second. <laughs> what year are we on? It's just her dad. It had to be like a, gr- a descendant's <laughs> roommate in college. Oh, man. Oh, my. Those are mine. Okay, so I think my references we need to talk about might get a little mixed up. So excuse me if I trip over oh, myself. Oh, Lord. As we go through this. Um, what'd you have for this? I didn't have, you didn't have a thing. Mm-hmm. Okay, so Charles. This is all you. It usually is, I think, with this one. <laughs> Nikki's like, well, I struck that out because no one cares about it. And I'm like, well, here's my dissertation on a charwoman. Um, but so they mentioned a charwoman, and I was like, what's that? It's a woman employed to clean houses or offices. Did you know what this was? I just assumed. Oh, okay. So this person comes out and cleans for a few hours as opposed to being a maid who usually lives as part of the household. It sounds like it's more of a British term. I just have to tell you, I don't like that term at all. I think it's terrible. Um, so, uh, so I wouldn't want to be called the charwoman. That's mm-hmm. all I'm saying. It just doesn't sound good. I am. It's, uh, the, my mental leap for assuming it was someone who cleans probably was contextual, but also like I'm thinking char, like soot. On a um, fireplace, mm-hmm. so we're just cleaning it up, like a yeah, 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 fireplace guy, sweeper, yes, a chimney sweep. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. Do they, do they also sweep the inside of the chimney? I don't know. I don't. I don't know. Maybe Dick Van Dyke knows. I don't know. Um, so, thank you, <laughs> thank you for that laughter. I was processing. He was in the news this week. Oh, was he? Uh-huh. Huh. Oh, because he was on the Masked Singer. And he was unmasked. And then the story morphed into he's married to a much younger woman who's like oh, yeah. 64. Uh, I, I didn't think she was that old. I thought she was like 30. I, I remember I hearing the age difference and being like, oh, that's a that's a big one. I probably ought to fact check myself, but I thought the way they were talking about it, I thought it was a huge age difference. And I was like, she's like in her 60s. I know, but he's like 182. 90 something. <laughs> it's a hundred year difference, even if she's 60. Um. They were born in eight generations apart. It's taking a second longer to uh, fact check than I thought it would. Okay. Full report back. Okay. Yeah. Keep looking into that because you don't want to ignore this next part. You mentioned Sherman and I just was, I, I had this in my references because I think Sherman is a really big, well, it's a really big Southern reference. Go ahead. Spill it, Nikki. She was 40 in 2012. So she's yeah. like 50-ish now. Yeah, so not near 60. and But also not 30. I mean. Well, he was 86 then. So she was half his age. Anyway, he's 110 now. It's, it's a beautiful love story. <laughs> that's what it is. He said know. she's what keeps him young, which yeah. I thought was really nice. I think that's probably true. I loved I, it. Well, so I love Dick Van Dyke. I mean, who doesn't? Well, I loved him a little less when I remembered when he got married to someone that young. And really? Yeah. I, it, it, she was in her 40s when they got married. <laughs> like, she's not a 19-year-old. <laughs> she wasn't 19. It's, I, I don't he know. He didn't groom her. It's, I don't know. <laughs> it was just, it's too weird of an age split for me. Anyways, it's not my business and I shouldn't be judging. Um. It was just a little tough one for me. I love the Dick Van Dyke show. That's all. Um, so Sherman, I think, is actually a really big uh, reference um, for those of us who were put through way too much Civil War <laughs> learning. Georgia history. <laughs> Eight times Georgia history. Um, 
But that's referring referring to General William T. Sherman. He's a major general. Well, he's not now. He's dead. Um, <laughs> is he? <laughs> a, a is he Julius Grandpa? He's a he's like her uncle. <laughs> major general of the Union Army, Army and um, his March to the Sea military campaign conducted through Georgia from November 15th to through December 21st, 1864. They followed a scorched earth policy, destroying not only military targets, but also industry, infrastructure, and civilian property. This um, disrupted the Confederacy's economy and transportation networks, and it played a big role in um, their eventual surrender. And I think this is really interesting in Georgia history, actually. Allegedly, he did not burn Savannah because it was so beautiful, which is something that you will hear if you visit Savannah. Um, I think it probably had a lot to do with a strategic need for their port, but also it is an incredibly beautiful city. So, who was the Georgia... Neg- blah, 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 blah. Who was the Georgia governor in 1989 in real life? I just got curious. It's Joe Frank Harris. He was governor from 83 to 91. Um, I don't know. <laughs> cool. I'll, I'll remember that. Um, <laughs> so, I'm sure he's a great guy. Uh, until somebody says, he was a terrible man. <laughs> I, I don't know anything about it. Um, Suzanne says, should have seen this coming last year when they honored that dog that was in the Burt Reynolds movie. So I had a couple of thoughts here. The first one was, we're going to have to start counting these Burt Reynolds references because mm. I'm just are we going to get like an actual evening shade reference at some point I'm curious um and then I it this drives me crazy I couldn't find what movie they're talking about but in trying to look for that I did not know that he voiced Charlie in All Dogs Go to Heaven which was a seminal movie for me growing up are you telling me you don't remember All Dogs Go to Heaven no okay. I'm feeling like this came up recently here Mm, no, I mean, I don't think we discussed it. I think it came up in my research, maybe. Mm. Sometimes it gets a little hard to remember right, what I right. read. Right, right. And then you were like, here's something not to say. And then I swooped it and said it for you. That seems right. Anyway, carry on. Gonna, I'm like, I'm going to All try Dogs to Go to the Heaven is a really, really sad movie. It's really sad and also really good. I loved that movie growing up. Mm. It was also a big competitor with Disney, whoever did that. I forget what the company's name was. Anyway, so that's all I got. Oh, okay. Well, there we go. Yeah. Brief. Now, now I'm stuck because I feel like maybe when you were going to do the segment on deliverance, oh, probably. I ended up down a rabbit hole on him. That's and then it started making me feel like we did talk about it here. Anyway, all dogs go to heaven. Watch it and then cry. Next episode, season four, episode nine, Julia and Suzanne's Big Adventure. We'd love everyone to follow along with us and engage. Instagram and Facebook at Sweet Tea and TV. TikTok at Sweet Tea TV Pod. Our email address is Sweet Tea TV Pod at gmail.com. And our website is www.sweetteatv.com. On that website, you can find our show notes and you can also find ways to support the show. And if you don't want to go to that website, you can just click around on your phone <laughs> oh, and my. rate and review us right there wherever you listen to the podcast. I didn't know where that was going. <laughs> you can just, you can just get on my Christmas card list. <laughs> So come back Thursday for extra sugar. We're going to use this episode long Georgia governor's mansion as an excuse to talk about the history of that mansion and Selena play a <laughs> grit splits game about other notable governor's mansions. Uh oh, Here's something I'll fail at. You You'll know, do great. It's you know, fun. You know what that means. What does it mean, Selena? It means I'm about to do really bad on something and we'll see you around the bend. Bye.